Hello guys, it's Robert here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a stock analysis on Procter & Gamble as possibly another inflation head stock. So basically we're just going to look at the overview of the company real quick. So Procter & Gamble company provides branded consumer packaged goods to consumers in North America and Latin America, uh, Europe, Asia, uh, Pacific, Greater China, India. So they're basically global. Pretty good. You know, you don't want all your customers coming um, from the United States. But once again, a geopolitical risk as this company is based out in America, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I'm like 99% sure that they're based out in America. So basically, we're just going to go straight into the financials of revenue growth. Okay, so we've had re revenue growth over the last five years. However, there was a big spike here. As you can see, it actually peaked in what? 2008, actually. So let's look at 2008. Uh, the revenue peaked at $83 billion. Actually, no. 2013 was better than that. And it's slowly been declining. And then it slowly came back up. Um, looking at their net income, uh, the net income has also slowly declined. And now it slowly came back up. This looks like it's their all-time highs for uh, net income with $14 billion. So good on them. Now we're going to be looking at the PE ratio. So the PE ratio is 27 and we want it under 15 which is quite as expensive especially for a market cap of 370 billion dollars so that means that we want like a pretty big drop to uh Get this stock to be our attention just because the pe is high doesn't mean that you know it's obviously no buy it's just you know company is expen expensive relative to its earnings next we're going to be looking at their price of sales and comparing it to their sector average so i always say for the other videos industry you know it's my mistake but sector average so the price of sales is 4.62 and if we look at you know um household uh or is it household products the industry average is about four for, in terms of price of sales so it is a little bit higher but it's not that much so next we're going to be looking at the retained earnings okay so the retained earnings going from 96.1 billion all the way up to 100 and 11 billion in total common equity has actually fallen so that's not really that great but if we look at the uh, retained earnings from like further out i just like the way it's formatted on seeking outcome for, for uh, retained earnings which is why i look at it there so retained earnings has been growing nicely so that's pretty good to see and you know it's obvious that they pay dividends so even though they are paying out dividends the retained earnings is still growing which you like to see next we're going to be checking solvency of the company so the current assets are 23 billion dollars current liabilities is 34 billion dollars so that's not really that great um the assets are greater than the liabilities but yeah i knew it a lot of it was in, is in goodwill and other intangibles which you know not really that great so we're going to be looking at their current and quick ratio just to see what the math looks like they have a current quick ratio of 0.5 and a current ratio of 0.7 so it's, it's not that great and their debt to equity ratio is under one which we want to under one but you know it is quite high um especially when it comes to uh current debt to their equity if we look at their total debt right now let's have a look here so they have a total debt of 33 billion dollars and they have a net debt which is positive which means they can pay off a debt with their um cash and cash equivalent which is uh, nice to see once again i made the same mistake as the zoom video um basically i recorded that video in advance which is why i made the same mistake so the net debt is a uh, positive which means they actually don't have enough cash and cash equivalents to pay off their debt which isn't that great next we're going to be looking at the shares outstanding to see if they're buying back shares and they are buying back shares let me just do the math for that real quick okay so they bought back about six percent of their shares next we're going to be looking at their uh, free cash flow growth so they went from about 9.3 billion up to 15 billion you know it was kind of like flat here and obviously started to take off right now so next we're going to be seeing uh, actually we're going to see calculate the uh, price of free cash flow okay so the price of free cash flow right now is 23.74 which is you know quite expensive for my take we'll talk about dividends in a second so that means it's going to take a pretty pretty much like a long time to be you know getting your money back through the free cash flow because you're paying quite a lot for it all right so now we're going to be looking at the cash flow statement to see what they're doing with their free cash flow so they're making quite a bit of acquisitions a pretty, a pretty big uh, four billion dollar acquisition here making their money back after you know selling their marketable security uh, looking at the uh, financing section so you know issuing debt paying back debt issuing some stocks you know for those acquisitions so they are buying back more shares than they are issuing for their you know acquisitions and competence with dividends pay so they paid out 7 billion in 2017 and then they're not paying out dividends um i'm actually gonna have to look into that one sec okay so if we look at roik ai it shows that they're paying out you know dividends seven you know 7.2 billion and now 8.2 billion i'm not really sure why it's not showing up on um seeking alpha but you know whatever okay let's look at uh 20 2021 free cash flow for example so 15.5 billion and so they're able to afford that acquisition they were able to repay the debt but when it comes to like you know dividends and buying back stock um they weren't able to pretty much afford all those things together with the free cash flow so they obviously you know took on some debt to do that as well or possibly used uh, some of the cash they had on hand next we're going to be checking to see if they pay dividend which is pretty obvious that they do you know i already uh, mentioned that earlier on in the video we're just going to see if the dividends are growing every year so going up 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 up, 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 up. Oh, okay. Actually, it went down here and then going straight back up. So we got a uh, $3 and pretty pretty much 40 cents per share when it comes to dividends, which is pretty good. So now just talking about what I was saying from before. So like free cash flow per share. So basically, if you're paying $24 for, let's just say we bought it in 2017 
and we bought it at a price of free cash flow of 24 so that means if we just add up these recent years okay so if you basically bought in 2017 with a price to free cash flow of 24 um it would have taken you a, a pretty much until like halfway through 2021 to make back your money. So from 2018 to 2020, free cash flow for per share added up was uh, 20.68. In 2021, obviously it went past the benchmark. So like, you know, make your, made your money back. But if we look at dividends, so actually like getting that money in your pocket, you actually have not made your money back at all, basically. So look, so 2.89 to 2.79. So you haven't made your money back yet. You actually have to wait a few more years. So basically, yeah, from uh, 2018 up to uh, trailing 12 months, um, you, you haven't really made your money back for uh, free cash flow. So that's why you don't want to be paying uh, that much um obviously you want to be looking at the free cash flow per share in terms of like quote unquote getting your money back but it's like it's, you know it's not like obvious in your bank account but in terms of like evaluation perspective obviously like dividends per share it's going to take quite a while because obviously you know uh, they're not using all the free cash flow to pay out dividends. Next, we're going to be looking at the coupon rate on their bonds to see if uh, stockholders are being compensated for their risk compared to uh, debt holders. So 5.5%, 5.8%, 2.7%. So the dividend yield was, what was it again? 2.25%. So it's pretty much an X in general as the uh, debt holders are being compensated for the risk um, compared to stockholders. Currently, even looking at the, tw the bond that's maturing in 2023, it's really not that good as comp. Um, as you know, as a stockholder, you want to be compensated for your risk. Next, we're going to be looking at the company's ROA, ROI, and ROE. So their return on assets was over um, 11%. Their return on equity was 32%. And their return on investments was over 18.3%. And now we're going to be looking at the return on invested capital. So return on invested capital right now is over 10%, which is pretty good. Pretty consistently, they're doing a pretty good job getting it over 10%, which means that management is doing a good job of investing their equity and debt. Okay, so now we're on the stock analyzer tool that was created by Everything Money. Um, I don't really have high hopes for this company. I mean, they are going to be increasing their prices you know with inflation because you know they do have that pricing power because they have a lot of pro products that people need and we will be looking at their portfolio of uh, products in a sec so i'm going to go four six and seven percent revenue growth uh, you know i'll go with eight percent um on the high end profit margin i'll go 15 17 and 19 free cash flow margin i might as well match that i always match it um in terms of pe you know what i'll be nice and i'll go 15 12 I mean, sorry 10 12 and 14 and looking that at that again once again because bond holders are being compensated for the risk higher than equity holders i'm gonna want a 15 percent return oh and let's analyze to see what it's looking like Ugh, this stock has to fall basically in half which is not looking that good i mean it kind of does make sense because the pe was like 27 so if you basically divide that by two you get around like what the middle assumption yeah so it's basically between you know the mid and high assumption which is you know what i was asking for the pe so it makes sense in terms of like the math okay so now I'm on Excel. We're going to basically put in those numbers to see what they look like in the next 10 years. I'm pretty sure I said 4, 6, and 8, sorry, and 8% revenue growth. So basically, that means you're going to have to go from a current of $76 billion to $164 billion in 10 years. So that's basically doubling in the revenue. They haven't even doubled the revenue in like the last 10 years. So, you know, these are quite aggressive numbers, to be honest. I, I you know, I was a bit uh, too optimistic because of inflation and all that stuff. But like, ugh, I mean, is it really real realistic that this company is going to be doubling their revenue on the high assumption not really okay so Procter & Gamble does have a lot when it comes to cleaning they have Bounce, Bounty, um, Dawn, uh, Tide is a big one, Gain. In terms of like toothpaste as well they have Crest, um, they got Oral-B, got Scope as well, Mr. Clean, I don't know if I said Pampers already so pretty much you know oh they have Old Spice, nice, Febreze, Downy so they do have like a lot of cleaning companies. Um, this company basically is going to be able to raise their prices with inflation and protect their margins because these are pretty much things that everybody needs. Um, they also have Dula as well um we'll see any other companies that like stand out we're not, we're not companies actually brands because they obviously own them oh head and shoulders just saw that right now pantene cascade ole pepto bismol sheesh man proctor gamble's got a stacked portfolio when it comes to these goods all right guys thanks for watching today's video hope you guys enjoyed it please like and subscribe so at 100 subs i could be doing a face cam proctor and gamble decent company but just want the pretty much the stock price to fall big time so i'll see you guys in the next video once again please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys later